if n is even, if n is even like it is here, what this is going to equal is you're still going to be able to cross things out. An nth root still matches with the nth power. You're seeing that, right? They still match up. However, if n is even, what you're getting is not just a. We're getting the absolute value of a. Getting the absolute value of a. Not just a. But because we know that here, our a is negative 5. We're not just getting negative 5. We need to be getting positive 5. We're going to take the absolute value of that. If n is odd, though, it doesn't matter. N is odd, it doesn't matter. I want to show you a couple examples in our last minute here just to make sure that you, you guys really see this. Uh, by the way, these don't take a whole lot of work. You're not even going to work on them. You're just going to cross stuff out and understand that one of them is going to have an absolute value and one of them is not. That's basically it. If it's even, it has absolute value around it. If it's odd, it doesn't. <clears throat> so let's do 6 root x to the 6th. Firstly, is, does the power match the root, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. So I'm still going to be able to cross these things out. You just have to understand when I'm going to have to have an absolute value and when I'm not. Do I have an absolute value here? No. Yes. If it's even, if n is even, I'm going to have an absolute value. Is n even? Yes. So am I going to have an absolute value or not? Yes. Okay. What the absolute value means is that when you have an even power, even powers make everything positive. What else makes everything positive? Absolute value. So you can cross things out as long as you have the absolute value. That's what even does. Odd doesn't make everything positive. At least negative is negative. Therefore, when I have an odd n, it doesn't matter. You just can write the, the n itself. So here's one. How about this one? Cube root of negative 3 in parentheses q. Am I going to have an absolute value or not? What's the n? What's the n here? There's only one number to pick from, right? Three. They're all three. Just say three. Yeah. That's, that's your n, right? It's n's three. It's an odd. What, odds don't make everything positive. Therefore, we don't need an absolute value. How about that one? Does the power match the root? Do we need an absolute value or not? Yes. So there's no work here, folks. If it matches up, you know it's going to simplify. You just have to know whether you need an absolute value or not. What do you think on that one? Absolute value or not? No. Absolutely not. Because it's odd, you don't need an absolute value. But you have to feel pretty good about, about this stuff. Okay, we have a couple more ideas on this, maybe about five minutes extra. We'll do this after our test on Wednesday. So the last thing we've got to do, we've got to graph some of these radicals. Again, I'm going to refresh your memory on how to graph just a square root of x. But then I also want to graph a cube root of x. And we're going to do this with a table. Just to be thorough, because we really don't know how this one looks. Let me change that to a G. Now, when we're graphing tables, we typically use just three points for lines. However, with these things, we're going to use like four points, four to five points, to make sure that we're, we're really thorough and understand what's going on. So let's go ahead and pick out some points for the square root of x. What points am I going to want to use here? What's one point I always use? Zero. Definitely one zero. I'll put that right there. Another point I might want to check out is one because it's easy to plug in. So let's find out what happens at one. How about two? Am I going to want to plug in the number two? No. Can you find the square root of two? No. You can. You can on a calculator. But if you just go square root of two, you go... 1.41? Yeah, it's 1.41, but you're not going to probably know that. You definitely don't want to graph it on the graph, do you? What number do you know the square root of? Four. Let's pick 4. And give me one more. Nine. Let's do 9410. 
Let's pick out some negatives, negative numbers. What do you want to pick for a negative number on the square root of x? One. Negative one? Okay, we'll try negative one. You know, let me give you some more space here so you can see those numbers a little better too. We had nine, four, one, zero, negative one. That, that'll be good enough for us. Let's see, we're taking nine, we're going to plug this in. What's the square root of nine, ladies and gentlemen? Three. Okay, so that gives me a point, nine, three. Four, what's the square root of four? Two. That gives me a point, four, two. How about the square root of one? One. one. Square root of zero? Zero. Good, that is possible, it's zero. Square root of negative one? Uh -huh. So, that's why on our graph, what? Square root of one, that doesn't even happen. That's why on our graph, when we graph this thing, there's nothing on this side of our graph because you can't even plug in a negative number. You can't plug in negative one to a square root, can you? No. You get no real solution. So when we graph these points, I'm going to start from the bottom up. I know zero, zero was there. I know one, one was there. But then we have to go all the way over to 4 to get a 2. So that's, notice that this is x comma y, so 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 2. That's right here. And then to get up to 3, I have to go all the way over to 9. So 9, 3 is my last point. That's why we got this funny looking curve. It's a half of a parabola on its side. That's why it kind of looked like a square root, actually. That's our graph. Do you guys remember that graph? Yeah. So from a while back, how many people do remember that, feel okay with it? See where these points are coming from, and most importantly, do you understand why we have no graph on this side of the y-axis? Yeah. Do you all understand that one? Can't plug in negatives, that means you're not going to get anything out over here on this, this section. Now let's see what happens with our cube root of x. I still want to plug in zero. I definitely want to find out what happens there. And I want to see what happens at 1. Now, do I want to see what happens at 4? No. Can you take the cube root of 4? What can you take the cube root of? Not 3. Not 9. 27. And some people said that three times now. I could do 27. You're right, I could do 27. But you know what? I don't want to put 27 in hash marks because I am lazy and I don't want to draw a graph. It's this big. So, yeah, I could check 0 because 0 is nice. I could check 1 because 1 is nice. 2, what's cube root of 2? You go, I don't know. What's cube root of 3? I don't know. Cube root of 4? I don't know. I take the square root of that. Cube root of 5? No. 6? No. 7? No. 8? Yes. 9? No. 10? No. The next one would be 27. So the numbers you can take the cube root of are the same numbers we've actually only been taking the cube root of, which are 0, 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216. All right, those are the only ones between there and 200 and, well, 300 something. So 343 is the next one for 7 cubed. So you don't want to do those, right? There's only, there's only a few of them. So the only ones we can pick are 0, 1, or 8. Maybe 27 if you really want to draw a large graph. You don't want to. Now, let's try some negatives here. Let's try negative 1 again. Let's see if that works. Is negative 1 going to work in this particular problem? Is there a difference between a cube root and a square root? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cube root has one extra time. A negative and a negative and a negative could potentially give you a negative, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. So that, for this reason, we can actually plug in negatives into our graph. We couldn't here because a negative times a negative, that only two times, won't give you a negative. It'll always give you a positive. But it, we're doing three times to equal the radicand. So negative, 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 potentially could give you a negative. Well, always, actually. And then we'll try negative 8. So let's do this together. If I plug in 8, what's the cube root of 8, ladies and gentlemen? 2. Okay. That gives me a point. Cube root of 1. What we're asking here again, remember, we're saying what times itself three times is giving us the 8? This is the cube root of 8. What times itself three times is giving you the 8? Well, that's, that's 2. Here it's going to be 1. How about 0? What's the cube root of 0? Yeah. For sure. What's the cube? Oh, negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 asks, what times itself three times 
gives you the radicand of negative 1. Yeah, let's think about that. Negative 1 times negative 1, that's 1, times negative 1 gives you negative 1 again. So that means that our cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. And lastly, cube root of negative 8, everybody? Good. Well, we've got some points. Let's see what this looks like. Notice that our points do come x comma y, just like always. So we have to go over to 8 on our x-axis. Also, am I going to have a piece of my graph over on the left-hand side in this case? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is different than over here. Here I couldn't plug in negatives. Here I could. Now, I'm doing something here that's going to be a little bit off, and I want you to see what I'm doing, just, but I'm doing it just so you can see the graph a little bit better. Do you notice how my hash marks here are a little bit bigger than my hash marks here? Mm -hmm. What that's going to do is expand my graph a little bit this way. This is actually supposed to be a little bit flatter than what I'm going to draw. Are you with me on that? So I'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm biasing the graph vertically a little bit, just so we're able to see it. But let's go ahead and plot these points. I'm going to work from the middle. I have 0, 0. I have 1, 1, that's here. I also have negative 1, negative 1. Is negative 1, negative 1 up here no. or down here? Yeah. Okay. Then I have 8, 2. 8, 2 says 8, 2, that's over here. And I have negative 8, negative 2. Negative 8, negative 2. That's a weird looking graph. Can you picture in your head what it's doing? Can you picture what it's doing. It looks similar to this, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. For part of it. It looks similar to this for the other part, except it's rotated 180 degrees. It's like all the way around. This right here, this graph, it's like an S-curve. It does do that. Actually, it doesn't, doesn't really, it's actually flatter than this. It's flatter than that graph. So I, I'm lying a little bit. I've expanded this just so you can see the curvature of this. Uh, but this should be a little bit flatter than this one. It's more radical because notice what you're doing. Here to get out the value of 2, you only have to plug in 4. Here to get the value of 2, you have to plug in 8. Right? That's going to squeeze it down closer to the x-axis. But then this side looks exactly the same, only going below the x-axis. It's, it's kind of like a reflection. It's really a rotation. But it, it does that curve. It's a nice s-curve. That's the cube root function. That's the cube root. One more thing I want to talk about here. Let's say that I'm not going to graph all these, it's just a ton of them. But let's say we wanted to graph a fourth root. A fourth root. Can you plug in a negative number into a fourth root? No. Mm -hmm. Can you plug it into a fifth root? Yes. How about a sixth root? No. Seventh root? Yes. So, what will every even root look like? This one? Or this one? What do you think? The square root or the cube root? Square root. square root. Every even type of root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, tenth root, will look similar to this. It'll have this general shape and only be one-sided because you can't plug in negatives. However, the higher you go up in your root, the flatter this will get. Okay? In order to get two out of a fourth root, you'd have to plug in 16. Go all the way over here. Okay, just to get the value of two. It's going to flatten 